Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sam Roberts Show, Mr. Wayne Brady. Wayne, how are you? Hey, Sam. Let me put this thing on my head. Hey, sir. Headphones are tricky sometimes, but you got them. You're a professional. Bam. You got this. How are you doing? I'm doing well, brother. Can I complain? How is game show life? Of course, you are the host of this generation's Let's Make a Deal. Um, is it repetitive? Is it Because don't you have to... How many shows do you film in a day? Two. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Because you hear some of these shows end up, like, Millionaire and stuff like that, like, they end up just doing show after show after show after show after show. Yeah, but even if they do that, I mean, the question about is it repetitive? Yeah. It's still, it doesn't matter. You you do your show every single day. Yeah, I guess or so. So any job is repetitive by virtue of that, so there's no good story to come out of, oh, shit, you're right, it's horribly repetitive. <laughs> right. I'm, a, I'm, in a, I'm in a coal mine of entertainment. No, mm-hmm. you you do it twice a day, and it is what it is. It's a different audience a- every single day. And so that's what you do. You kind of, because you have your, your format, and you just figure out how to make it different by working with the audience or whoever's there. Well, there's a bunch of different games and yeah. deals, and the audience is different. And, and so the show really relies on me and the interaction I've got with the audience. So it's always going to be different because each audience is different, and every single person in there, the person that I pick, that may be the person that, for whatever reason, mm-hmm. sparks a conversation with them that sparks this funny song that I start doing with Cat Gray on the show, or it sparks a funny character, or it sparks an interaction that makes us run out the studio to do something. You know what I mean? That there's yeah. always an escalation of some sort, and you never know where it's going to come from because it really depends on them. How how long into your career of doing television were you confident in yourself that you would take something like that? Like I, I would assume in the beginning you wouldn't just keep going and going with something because you're like, whoa, am I... Am I going too long with this? Now you've had enough success that you know what you're doing. Right. Like with anything, I think the more you you, you do it like you say, that you feel, okay, I've got a handle on this. Yeah. And that's just in life in general. I, I think that there are a couple things that I know specifically that I could definitely host or e- even do my live improv show. I have no problem because I've got a clock in my head now, so I'm confident on time. I've, I'm confident timing-wise. I think that... I know who I am, so I can say certain things that I wouldn't even have said maybe six years ago. So I think it is a function of time. Really? Like, what do you mean, like, things you would say now I, that you would just, just say? Just in general. Just if something struck me as funny, that I could say that. Gotcha. Or if I had an opinion, I can air that as opposed to censoring myself about something because I just know more and, and I'm more confident in myself. And, and hopefully that's, that's, that's what happens to everybody. Yeah, because I guess the better you get at something, and I would think that also you're less in the business now. Like people know who Wayne Brady is, so you're less in the business of showing them what you can do, and more in the business of doing it. That's that. That's the best distinction that I've ever heard. Yeah, that's it. As Fabulous. opposed to, it, it's kind of like setting up a pilot that your pilot has to set up the world and and even your first season you're letting everybody know who you are Mm -hmm. then when you come back for more then you don't have to worry about all that it's like if you don't know you'll you will catch up and if you do know you're already invested how far into what were you doing before whose line before whose line I was doing a lot of TV, mm-hmm. but but you wouldn't have known known my name then. Right. Um, doing a lot of guest star stuff. Um, and but I, mainly acting. Not like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so even well, and whose line? It's still acting. I'm not just being being uh being uh, Wayne Wayne the uh, the parking attendant. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm still doing Performing. doing characters, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, doing a lot of theater, uh, doing a lot of touring and various shows, and uh, so my time was spent. Be between theater on the stage, doing improv uh, gigs with the group I was with um, there in Los Angeles, uh-huh. uh, doing a lot of voiceover, um, doing uh, band work. And were you confident walking into Whose Line that this was something you could handle immediately, or was that something that you had to build? The Who's I just auditioned for Whose Line because the rest of the group was auditioning for Whose Line. Uh-huh. To to be perfectly honest, it was not something that I had any confidence in. In, in doing it it was just for the group experience of hey well you guys are here I'll be here too a right little solidarity and, up top and that's it like we'll just do it as a team so when you started to break out from that were you expecting it or were you surprised I think I was well once once I started doing it yeah I expected people to take notice because 
it was different than anything else that was on the air. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's always your hope. I'd hoped that people would would like it enough that they'd go, oh yeah, that's that guy, that's Wayne. That, but you never know until it actually happens to you. Right. And did you know that your thing was going to be the songs? Well, I think I've got a lot more than just that. But that's that's but, the kind of thing that I think they've latched on to immediately. But that's one of the things that yeah. they they yeah because I'm a musician, so mm-hmm. so that particular skill came very easy to me. So just for that matter, which is why I always said to to the producers, just don't have me doing these musical challenges because I do the physical challenges and I and 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 we do the impressions and and the things off the yeah. top of the head, and so I do more than just the songs because I never wanted to be the song guy. Right. Is that a difficult thing, though, to have to tell the producers? Because I would think that as soon as they see you excelling at something, they're like, okay, we're going to use him to do that every time, and you're going, I... I want to round myself out a little bit. Well, well, just in life, because I'm not an idiot, I also know that when you do something, people go, oh, I want you to do that all the time. Right. No, you don't, because when someone does something all the time, then you go, well, I'm bored of that, because that's all he does, he does it all the time. Yeah. Humans, by virtue of being human, uh, can be stupid as hell. And and I really feel that that's what we do. Right. We like to say, nope, I like that yogurt. That's the best yogurt. I'm going to eat it. If I was on a desert island... I would eat that all day. Oh, I'm so full of that crap. No, I don't want it anymore. Right, I don't want it anymore. It's been a week and I'm done with it. Yeah, it's been a week. Uh, uh. Now I'm going to break up with her because I've seen her for five days straight. Right. Right, it is. It's it's that same thing in your brain. Absolutely. So that being said, that's what I've always gone into everything with. No, I'm not just going to do that one thing. Now, did you know that from the very beginning or was that something that you were learning? Because it felt like at first everybody loved you. The cool thing was to like Wayne Brady, and then the cool thing became to not like Wayne Brady, and there was a lot. I feel like that did happen. There was backlash towards you. Well, I don't think it was. Well, when you say it like that, you you make it sound like everyone said uh-huh. it's the cool thing to not like Wayne Brady. Mm-hmm. If everyone said that, I wouldn't be have been gainfully employed for the past thirteen, fourteen years. Right. I've always been on TV, so. I think maybe certain cool kids, and I'm using air quotes, but now with my hands, said, "Oh, we're we're not gonna like Wayne Brady because it," and because this is serious, I can say that. Yeah. Fuck those people, right? Because you can't do what I do, and you can't do what I do, right? The other person that may have said, "Oh, Wayne Brady, this can't do what I do," so I never really worried about that person. I see that's such a good place to be because if you not if you don't know that going in. That's the type of thing that drags people to the ground. Well, it's not. Well, I'm. Well, am I going to lie? It. It's not a great feeling to hear someone say, "Oh, I'm going to g- g- talk shit about you, and I don't like you." Yeah, that's not great. Right. But at the end of the day, I also realize that I have a skill set that most people don't. Right. And that you can you can sit back and be like, "Wait, let me pay attention to the work I just did." Right, and I'm pretty fucking good at this and, at this point. And let me look at these six Emmys that I have on my mantle right, right now, and let me look at my Grammy nomination. Right, and let me look at my money, and you can kiss my ass. <laughs> right now, I'm gonna go host my game show. And that's the way. It and I'm gonna be. go do my other sketch show, and I'm gonna go do this. So I'm I'm not in the business of of playing high school. Right. So so even even talking about this is funny to me because. Uh, there, in my mind at least, there mm-hmm. was never a oh let's all jump on a bandwagon and hate Wayne Brady phase because I've seen that happen to people in magazines even where like Anne Hathaway mm-hmm. oh it's funny to make fun of Anne Hathaway that's a talent, talented chick right but for whatever reason oh we're all gonna jump on that bandwagon if if the worst thing that you could say say about me is oh he's talented and he does that stuff and da da da. Okay, great. Well, it's a weird thing. It seems like there's a whole industry of people who observe people who have talents and abilities or who work towards it. There's a whole industry of people who don't do any of that work and just kind of write about it. And when they think it's time, like, ah, oh, I kind of want to see if I can turn people. Yeah. That, and that's what happens. It's 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 an ugly thing. That's a and and if that's what if that's how you make your living, right? More power to you. Uh, it's sad to me uh, that that's how you make your living because you can't do anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I because my challenge has always been to to anyone to anyone, whether it was you name another top 
top comic or or another actor or just somebody in the street. Say what you want to, but can you do what I just did? If you can do what right. I just did and kill it, then what can I say? I have not met that person yet. Right. If you if you if 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 I'm not doing it right, show me how to do it. And if you can't do it better than me, then why don't you just let me do it my way? So so I'm completely fine with that. Yeah. You make fun, do whatever you want to. Many have tried. And at the end of the day, I'm still here. Right. So that's food's why, still on your plate. That's why I get on the plane and I come and I do a press junket for Let's Make a Deal and next and and in a month I'll do one for Whose Line Is It Anyway and then I'll do one for my <laughs> Disney Kids show and then I'll right. do one for Real Husbands of Hollywood on BET mm-hmm. and then I'll do one because I'm hosting the BET Honors in January and then I'll do one for the Daytime Emmys because I'm doing that. So so that being said, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that was that. said. So now, do you work and work and work? Because you like the work so much, because you want to interact with different people. Like, why? Why do you work so much? It's not that I work so much. Is that I you work. just gave me that? That was that's a no, major. No, no, but I do. But doesn't things. anybody? Doesn't anybody else work? Because this is the only and this the the entertainment field is the only field where someone goes, man, why do you work so much? Because you because. There's a place where you are when you're trying your damnedest to get that work because you haven't got it. Uh huh. And then there's a place where you do have it, so you need to work like you don't know if that work is always going to be there or not. Right. And there's the mid-ground that I think is the healthiest place to be of, re- remember that this is what you chose to do and it's fun. No one drafted you into entertainment. No one drafted you to do what you do. Right. No one held a gun to your head and said, you have been conscripted by the United States to be on the radio. It's part of our new program. You have to. <laughs> no. It's what you do. Right. This is, I would have done this. No, I did do this for free. <laughs> and, and and I think, I guess part of it is staying in touch with that part of you that's like, wait, wait, wait. This is what you were fighting all this time to get. I stay in touch with that every day. Yeah. There's not a day that goes by that I don't go, I remember what that was like. I remember not being able to, to oh yeah, I just want to buy that plate of food Mm -hmm. oh i remember that okay well i don't like that so let's just keep working so we can make sure that that never happens again shall we yeah and on top of it i love what i do i love being on stage Mm -hmm. i love being in front of the camera i love that that's entertainment i I love showbiz now how do you prepare do you just do you just have an ability to access funny at this point where you can walk out and and just know that whatever gets thrown at you, you'll be able to access that funny? Or is there something like, okay, I want to try to make sure we hit on this because I have this idea that I'm going to do on, on whether it's Who's Line, whether it's uh, I think uh, it's let's accessing make a deal. funny. Just it, having it. in the, But because that's an interesting way of putting it, I, because I think of funny as a, like a musician thinks of funny. Mm-hmm. It, it's a rhythm and you become better at it the more you play or the more you sing and the better you feel. So I think I'm good with the rhythm of funny, of being confident of even when I walk out to do an improv show. I know pretty much at this point that it's going to be a good show. The audience would have to sit there and stone face me or throw rocks and pull down their pants and moon me for it to be a horrible show. (laughs) And even then, I'm pretty confident that I could turn it yeah so it's about accessing how i can talk to certain people to get certain bits of information that i know that i can use and turn that into funny that 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 i can spin that so i feel confident about accessing that so it's not that i so it's not that i think i'm funny it's more so I think I know how to find funny, how to find the funny in whatever there is. And I've been doing this long enough that not only can I find that funny, but then I can turn this into snide funny. I can turn this into heartwarming funny. I can turn that into charming funny. I can turn this into deaf jam funny if needed. Right. Or I can turn this into to to uh you get to NBC primetime funny. So kind of kind of part of your thing is just being hyper aware of the audience cuz not only hyper aware. Do you have to know 
how you're going to access that from this person, but you have to know how to now translate it, which type of funny you're going to do, because that would depend on the audience. Know your room. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that I tell people, even stand-ups, I've never done stand-up, think, thinking of doing stand-up scares the shit out of me. It does. Um, because I've written sketch for years, and, and even when I do an award show, I have writers, but ultimately, at the end of the day, instead of solid joke jokes, I have areas that I know that I can speak or give a story mm -hmm. that would be funny for that. So to be a stand-up where you constantly, daily, are honing this joke that it's a matter of one word, yeah. and, and your whole reality hinges on this joke that I'm going to tell you. Please know that this joke that I've poured over is funny, and I want you to accept this joke from me. I I is this good? No! Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. My heart. That's why so many stand-ups are horrible, horrible, bitter human beings. Right, because they're sitting there, well, if I change it from an and to a but, then will you guys think it's funny? Maybe. Eh. Uh, and 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 that's a skill in itself, man. I have to give a lot of love to the stand-ups who, you know, like off the top of my head, someone like Kevin Hart, yeah. who has busted his hump for a bajillion years and now has started to reap all that success because he's focused. He, <laughs> he knows that comedy is a game of... And the yeah or what and and that's the difference. Especially when you hear the stories about the comics that were with him when he was starting at the comedy cellar that were sitting in the front row throwing phone books at him while he was doing the show just to fuck with him. Yep. And he's still like, okay, I'm gonna figure out how. And that's why I mean, there's very few comics that are as funny as Kevin Hart in any environment. And I guess that's the same thing you were talking about is knowing every audience and just knowing okay here's what i have to do here right and most of the time it works and this is what i do well and then you know what you do yeah i think that 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 that's it in a nutshell is if you can be aware of what you do and know yourself inside out yeah no one can mess with you because it's because it's your game right so that's why i have nothing but the utmost confidence in myself how long were you doing improv or performing before you knew that you had the ability to okay i can control this room i didn't know that i had that ability or or tried to develop it until after i was on whose line wow i'd already been working for years because improv was not a destination mm -hmm. improv was a tool mm -hmm. if i would have had my druthers when i moved out to la i wanted to be i wanted to be on a sitcom or a one hour and i wanted to record a record and I wanted to have, have a successful recording career and a successful run on a show so that I could then get my money and go to Broadway. Had no designs about doing improv on TV or comedy in that sense. So is, is part of like, would you, if you were advising people to sort of map to success is just kind of let go of whatever, because I, I feel like people cling on to those things. You know what I mean? Like well, they have I can this. Say that now with some yes, let go. <laughs> That's what you should do. Now yeah. that I've done this stuff, well, it worked for me, it so for it me. should it's work for. The... I, I I think it's a. I think if I had to go back in time, I would. I think you should have a battle plan, mm -hmm. and you should know what you want, but your plans should be malleable. You should be able to to stick and move so hey maybe i'm not getting in this door right let me just alter my approach and oh look now i'm in now is that tough for you though to go from okay i'm going to be a broadway performer and a musician to being well no i'm going to be an improv performer and a host to kind of say well no this is where i'm going to shift it's not the exact dream but it does the trick well if I have, if I weren't acting, then I would say, yeah. But I do sitcoms all the time, mm -hmm. so so that fills that void. Yeah, so yeah. I'm an actor. I, I never stopped. Right. So I never went through something where, let's make a deal, is my primary job, but it isn't my only job. Mm -hmm. So I never had to have that con conversation that you're describing, which I think that some people had to. Yeah. Of of well, none none of my other dreams are pan panning out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is it. You got to be a Chuck E. Cheese all day. Uh -huh. So, so that isn't it. But I do think I felt I've felt that to a degree because I didn't know if 
I would be able to because a lot of my contemporaries and like I did this show year years ago called uh, Quick Wits on NBC it was syndicated on uh, after Saturday Night Live and folks like Steve Carell did it and uh, and I knew Steve from 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 doing a lot of shows with the Second City guys and then you look at someone who has gone on to this global uh, film fame and on and then you go well why not me and then I'm sure that a lot of people play that game all the time. That's the game you can't play. Right. That's the thing that will screw screw you up because while you're busy going, well, why can't I hit it? You're you're still doing all this stuff, so you have to be appreciative for that and find out how to make this work for you. Right. Instead of sitting there going, well, if I got a chance, da, 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 da. well, look, you've got a chance to do this, so make that work for you, so you could possibly get there. And it seems like every bit of energy that you spend worrying about what somebody else is doing and how you can mold to that is not spent worrying about how you can further yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. And and I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I've done that yeah. a lot. I kicked and screamed and done that, but I've I've had to find a way to not do that. And you because still fall a lot into of energy it because you're human. Yeah, just, just like earlier saying that there there are always going to be people that that are going to hate on you. Yeah, because you're here because there's a response of well, I just don't like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let everybody know I don't like that. And, and in fact, not only do I not like that, but I don't like you. So I'm going to let everyone know that I don't like you. You don't really even know why you have that response, right? And if you ever, and if they ever met you face to face, like, oh, hey, Wayne Brady, hey, nice to meet you. And I've actually had a couple of those conversations, uh -huh. which is the funniest thing in the world to hear someone talk shit about you in a public forum, and then upon meeting you, yeah, oh my god, oh, I'm such a fan, and blah, 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 blah. and and I know that they've said what they've said, but at but at the end of the day, they're not taking food out of my mouth and. And in fact, I feel bad for them because then they're the ones having to 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 uh, to backpedal. Right. I feel if you say that you don't like somebody, <laughs> stick by that and ride it into the ground. <laughs> if I say that I don't like you, uh -huh. I'm I'm going to put on my cowboy chaps and and I'm going to ride that horse for a long time. Right. And that's what you should do. I mean, that's why. But that's what the internet does. It allows you to just kind of, without thinking, say whatever you want to say and then not actually have to live up to it at all how uh and i only got you for another minute or two but how fun i guess is the word was the dave Chappelle sketch oh that was great that seems like just a black i know it was a long time ago but i've never yeah. spoken to you so yeah it was fun it, it was absolute fun and and people ask that question all the time yeah it was a great sketch right it doesn't have the same place for me that it does for the people mm -hmm. because i happen to be the person living the life of i did it and now i'm gonna go I'm on about on to the next my thing. happy way yeah but daily it's a testament to comedy and music are two great, um, uh, are two of the greatest uh, things that can stick with a person, and yeah. they attach themselves to your memory and to your taste buds. Well, folks, well, folks, like I love that sketch so much. Yeah, I love that man. I love do that shit again. <laughs> I love that. Do that now. Like no, sir, that's a long time ago. I'm not gonna do that right now. Really? Because I love that. Like, I, all right. Brother, I, no, really. Dude, it's on, it's on I, DVD. I, okay, do it now. Because I love it. I'm going to take out my iPhone. Do it now. Cause, and I'll do Dave's part. Go. Have you Sandwich! <laughs> yeah, so, so no. So, like, sir, leave me leave me alone. This is why I have security now. And, is, I'm in, and, and I'm in the urinal. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Uh, but that's, that's, I mean, that's part of it. You go, like, it's the same thing as, as the critics or whatever. These are, if these are the only costs to the... Amazing highs that come with being an entertainer. I guess Amen. It's, it's worth it, isn't it? Amen. Well, listen, everybody, I want everybody to check out Let's Make a Deal. Oh, this is what I was going to ask you. You're talking about, you know, the way comedy and music sticks with people. What level of appreciation do you have for your own stuff? Like, do you not watch your own stuff? Do you watch it to learn from it? Are you, or are you one of these people that are actually sitting there entertained by their own work? I've never been able to watch my own self. I watch a little bit because the magic trick of seeing yourself on TV has never gotten old for me. Yeah. Because I remember sitting at home as a kid thinking, how does someone get on that box? That's not possible. That happens to other people. I don't know anybody that's on TV, so it can't possibly happen. It right. can't possibly. So I remember the first time I actually saw myself on TV, it was seeing this other person. And I never... 
quite lost that, which I think is part of, I try to keep it to fuel my appreciation. So every blue moon, I'll catch a little something or I'll catch an interview that I've done or I'll see a show or I'll, or I'll t- tune in if someone else has, has it on and go, wow, that's really that's so weird. How did you get on TV? Right. You dumbass. How <laughs> how did you do that? Who's letting you on that thing? And They're stupid. <laughs> and now I'll watch Who's Lying with my daughter. Uh-huh. And she's seen a lot of the old ones, but she watches the new one. And and so I sit and I watch it with her. And this time, this is probably one of the only times that I'll sit, I laugh. Because that show, I, I have to say, the new incarnation of Let's Make a Deal on the CW. You mean uh, Who's you, Lying? What I just say? You said oh, yes. let's make a deal. Yes, the one new of your other of, many television shows. Yes, uh, <laughs> the new incarnation of Who's Lying on the CW. It's ridiculous mm-hmm. because I think I feel funnier even because of what you were saying. That how long does it take you to get to this place? Yeah. Now when I'm doing Who's Lying, I just walk on set. I'm like, you know what? Just turn on the camera. Let's go. We, I know how to do it. Yeah. Let's just go. Let's yeah. Let's go. Before I was scared shitless every single episode because you had no intention of doing this. And I'm like, how? Did the camera <laughs> on pee me? Yeah, so yeah, I feel like that's a that's a good way to put it when you're talking about watching yourself on TV. I feel like if you and I might be totally off on this, but I feel like I guide myself a lot of times by would I think this was cool if I was a kid? And if the huh. answer is yes, then I should do it. Or it's that's like so good. you know what I mean? And I feel like that's kind of everything. That's great, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, listen. I would think that uh let's make a deal was cool when I was a kid. Well, so I, I would suggest that, that everybody, uh, everybody check it out. It's on uh, CBS every day. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Wayne Brady. Oh Good man, to I meet appreciate you. you. Thank you, and uh, great, great interview. You, you're awesome. Oh, thank you very much.